worship God. Let's continue to just be in his presence. Give him all adoration. Give him all glory. Give him all praise. It is the day that the Lord has made. We will be rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give all glory to God for this new day, for this new Sunday. It is by his mercies that we are not consumed. It is by his grace, it is by his love that we are redeemed. Let's just give grace to the King. Let's give honor to the Father. Let's give honor to the Father. Good morning, Jesus House Baltimore. I know we're happy to be in his presence this morning. Before we get into worship, I, I just want us to, to pray one prayer, one prayer that today we encounter God, that we encounter God today, that we encounter his voice, that we encounter his healing, that we encounter him on a new level that we have never encountered him before. Let's just pray one time. Let's pray one time. Father, may we encounter you today. May we encounter you today. May you give us a word today. May you give us a, a, a message today. May we encounter your healing, O oh Father. May we encounter your grace, O oh Lord. May we encounter your love, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the mode of worship this morning. Good morning, Jesus. I was born to make some noise. Good morning. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them that you serve a mighty God. Come tell your neighbor that you serve a mighty God. Lord your mighty, 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 Lord your mighty.
start where you found me coming back to your heart now I surrender take me this is all I can pray that the heaven cannot contain him, that he made the earth his full stop. Come and worship him this morning. Give him this, all that you have. Sing unto him a new song today. Father, we bless you. The undescribable God, the unchangeable God. Baby, hey, worship Hallelujah. 
faithful God. We serve a merciful God. Brethren, let's worship Him. 
Father, Lord, we just say thank you. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be here in your presence this morning, O oh Lord. We are here, Lord, not by our strength, but by your grace, by your mercies, O oh Lord. But our Lord, we say thank you. We do not take it for granted, O oh Lord. Brethren, let us worship this God. Let us worship our Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Brethren, this morning, first, we're going to pray for the vessel that God will be using to bring forth the word. So at this time, let us begin to pray. Brethren, let us pray that God will speak through her with power and in truth. Brethren, let us pray that she will speak as God's mouthpiece, unedited and unfiltered in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, let us begin to pray that God will send forth a word, a word that will completely transform our lives, a word that will change our situations for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray that none of us will leave here the same way we came, and that your word shall not fall to the ground, but shall have everlasting life. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Secondly, we are going to commit this morning's service unto God. So at this time, brethren, let us begin to pray that the Holy Spirit will have his way in our midst this morning, and that his presence shall be felt by each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, let us pray that God will, will, will take absolute control over all that we do this morning and that he will lift his countenance upon us, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we pray that you do only that which you can do, O oh Lord. And at the end of the day, only your name shall be glorified. Please accept our worship in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Good morning, church. At this time, let us have our seats in his presence. And to our brothers and sisters worshiping with us online this morning, we welcome you to the service. So let us sit back as we present JHB Reveal. Good morning and welcome to Jesus House Baltimore. My name is Buki Omidera and you're watching JHB Revealed. Please sit back and relax as you watch the following announcements. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, if you're worshiping with us online or in-house, we welcome you. Jesus House Baltimore is a family and community of people of many tribes, many nations. We challenge each other to maximize our God-given potentials. 
Listen out for a call that's just for you during the service. The church office is in need of an administrative officer. If you're interested, please send your resume to the address shown here on the screen. Remember, the deadline is today. Our life group continues on Thursday, May 19. In addition to the community groups, JHB also features affinity groups. So if you're interested in sports, IT, sewing, real estate, whatever it is, reach out to someone in the back and they'll be able to help you. Our solution night will hold on Thursday, May 26th. That's the last Thursday of this month. It will be a time of word, prayer, and communion. If you're worshiping with us online, please prepare your crackers or bread or any type of juice and join us as we commune with the Lord. Our next baptism class will hold on Saturday, June 4th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Baptism will take place immediately after, that's water baptism will take place immediately after the class. To register, please fill out the form at the church center app or the church's website. To all the graduates of 2022, congratulations. It's a big deal, and we're going to celebrate you on the first Sunday of June, that's June 5th, during the service. If you graduated in December 2021 or will be graduating this May, please email the following information. Your first and last name, a picture, the name of your high school or college, GPA, course of study, and remember, you have to send it by May 29th. God bless you, and congratulations again. This is a members-only event. Guess what, guys? Ah, <sighs> finally, JHB's annual family picnic will hold on JHB campus on July 3rd after the service. The Fusion Ministry is excited to announce the return of some fun times for the JHB couples retreat. Please save the date Thursday, October 13th to October 16th. We will be traveling, traveling, to a destination in the Caribbean. This will be an amazing time of reconnection, of fun and relaxation. For more information, please send an email to the address shown here on the screen. If you're fully vaccinated and you desire to worship with us here in church, but you need transportation, please kindly contact us at the information displayed here on the screen. Join JHB's virtual one hour with Jesus, the prayer meeting that's on Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Trust me, you will be blessed. Coming up shortly is the word. As I wrap up today's announcements, send the service broadcast links to your friends, send it to everyone, your family on your contact list. Let them join in and experience the same blessings and the same word that you are about to experience. Forward and subscribe the Jage Blue YouTube link, Facebook link, whatever platform you're watching the service on. Share the link on your Instagram page or your WhatsApp status. God bless you as you do. Did you miss any of these announcements? You can stay connected with us simply by visiting the church website shown here on the screen, and you can follow us on all our social media outlets. Thank you so much for following along from JHB Studios. My name is Buki Omidira. Please do enjoy your week and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. On site and online, you're welcome to our service today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Does anybody feel that way this morning? Woo! Hallelujah. It's a good day to be alive. Always a good day to be alive. Always, always. Can you give God a mighty hand of praise? Let's give him a praise. Give him a praise. Woo! Because if not for the Lord who has been on our side, we will have been swallowed up by the enemy. Mm, yes, yes. Our senior pastors are out of town at the moment, but they'll be back very soon by God's grace in Jesus' name. A few announcements to buttress before we go into the word this morning. Uh, Solution Night will hold on Thursday, May 26 at 7 p.m. I don't know of anybody who does not need a solution, so I know it's talking to you and I. So please, let's make it a date. It's going to be a time of word, prayer, and communion. Amen. 
You heard the announcement, the church office is accepting applications for administrative officer. The application ends, uh, receipt ends today, and you can send your resume before end of day today to careers at jesushousebaltimore.org. Careers at jesushousebaltimore.org. Dot org. The next baptismal class is going to hold on Saturday, June 4th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. All new converts and members of JHB who are yet to be baptized by immersion are encouraged to register. And you can find the registration forms on our church website, jesushousebaltimore.org. Amen. All 2022 graduates. Come on, when God has taken you through a process and you reach the end, the Bible says the end of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. All 2022 graduates in the house, kudos to you, kudos to you, kudos to you. If you graduated in December 2021 or you'll be graduating this May or you have graduated this May, please send your full name, high school or college name, course of study, the degree you got. GPA and pictures to info at jesushousebaltimore.org between now and May 29th. Please note that this is a members only event. So your cousin from um, the first church of the frigid day, or it's not, I'm just saying. The fusion ministry would like to invite all JHB couples to the next couples retreat, which will hold from October 13th to 16th. We'll be traveling to a destination in the Caribbean. Uh, please save the date, and um, for more information, you can send an email to fusion at jesushousebaltimore.org. Perhaps you need more information for that event, please send an email to fusion at jesushousebaltimore.org. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we're ready for the word this morning. If you're online, we want to welcome you to the presence of God. And the Bible says where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. But that liberty does not necessarily mean you should be cooking right about now. It means you should not be distracted. It's time to hear the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is life unto those who believe it. Amen. Amen. And so we'll be going into the word, but maybe you have your phone here. Can you please bring it out? And please do me a favor. Do the work of an evangelist this morning. Let's send uh, the link to this service out to all our family and friends. If you're at home, do the same, please. And God will bless you for it in Jesus' name. Today, I want to build on the foundation that was set at DTC 2022 from May 1st through May 8th. Did you receive the promise of God to break forth during that season? Is that you? Is that you? Did you receive the promise? Not everybody received the promise. Are you committed to breaking forth? We are breaking forth in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what? The conference may have ended, but the promise still stands. Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verse 31, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 3, the KJV version says, Isaiah 54, verse 3, the KJV version says, let's read it together. Let's read it together. One, two, let's go. For thou shalt break forth, on the right hand and on the left. Can I hear an amen? amen? And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. Amen? amen? And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence this morning. We realize without a shadow of a doubt that only the living can praise the Lord. A living dog is better than a dead lion. So no matter what the situation or the circumstance we may be going through is this morning, we have come into your presence where there is fullness of joy and to your right hand where there are pleasures forevermore. Lord God, therefore, we want to say thank you in advance for that which you will do in our midst in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray even as you've inhabited our praises, O oh God, that the prayer on everyone's heart this morning, each and every person who is in here or who is watching online, each of us have a prayer. We have a need, O oh God. Father, we pray that your word, oh God, that you send, oh Lord, that heals, oh God, that delivers from destruction, will heal us and deliver us in the name of Jesus. Your word will bring us joy, will activate hope and faith in us in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that none of us will live here empty in Jesus' name because you will feed us, oh God, Father, with the bread of life in the name of Jesus. We take authority over the atmosphere and we come against every spirit that wants to come against the knowledge of God in this place and we hold you captive in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare the 
word of God will flow swiftly and the Holy Spirit will do that which he has promised to do. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You already know now that to break forth is to spread. It is to explode with results. It is to emerge. Somebody say, I am emerging. It is to enlarge. Pastor said it last week that it is an active case of progress and improvement. It is to go from glory to glory. It is to go from grace to grace. Is that somebody's testimony this morning? It is to go from walking to soaring. Is that somebody's testimony this morning? To break forth is to be great. And Pastor closed out the conference last week saying these words to us, and I took my marching orders, orders from there. And he said these words as he was about to close. He said, now begin to take steps towards greatness. He said, number one, engage preparation. Everyone who wants to break forth must prepare. He says, like a mother expecting her child prepares a room, he says, you and I also ought to prepare a room for our spreading out, for our expansion, for our enlargement, for you shall break forth to the right and you shall break forth to the left. He says, number two, enlarge your mindset. He said, how you think, for as a man thinks, so is he says, think big according to what the word of God says in the message version of Isaiah 54. He says, think big, don't think small. And then number three, he says, do things, begin to take steps. Do things that you have never done before because when you do things that you have never done before, you will see God do what he has never done before. Mm, some people on this side feel it, but nobody here felt it. I said, when you do the things that you've never done before, you will see God move the way he's never moved before. Amen. You know, doing the same thing and expecting a different result, they define that as lunacy, and none of us is a lunatic. But when we begin to take those steps towards greatness, when we begin to engage things that we've never engaged before, when we begin to expose ourselves to new dimensions and new horizons, then we begin to see God manifest in a way we've never seen him before. Do you believe that? You know, Hannah had always been taking the situation and the circumstances that she was going through until she did something she'd never done before. She always went to Shiloh, but she'd never gone into the temple. I want to tell somebody today, maybe you've always come to church, but you've never gone into the presence of God to ask for a revelation about what you ought to be doing. I want you to take that step today when you get home. Ask him intentionally. Ask him deliberately. What on earth am I supposed to be doing in this season? When everybody's breaking forth. I have even right now been dissociated from the word. I don't know who this is for. It is not in my notes. But I want you to know that because you are here this morning and because you are online, God is saying something definite to you. Do something you've never done before. Go to Shiloh. Present your case before God and you will see what you've never seen before. You will carry your Samuel in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to continue on the back of that word today. As we engage the steps to greatness, it is important that we know that greatness has enablers. Somebody say enablers. So this morning, I will be speaking on enablers of greatness. Somebody say amen. amen. Do I have some encouragers in the house this morning? Thank you very much. God bless you. I want to start by saying that God has never doubted himself. We may doubt God from time to time, but God has never doubted himself. When God speaks, it must be done. Situations and circumstances arrange themselves to establish the word of God from generation to generation. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, verse 25a, Ezekiel 12, 25a, the New King James Version, he says, For I am the Lord, I speak. And the word which I speak will, not may, will come to pass. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read some scriptures this morning. I'm kind of a scripture girl, so please pardon me. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 24, The Lord of hosts has sworn to you and I. He says, surely as I have planned your destiny, so will it be. He said, as I have proposed, so will it stand. I said, so will it stand. 
Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. God said, I declare the end from the beginning an ancient times from what is still to come. I say concerning you, my purpose will stand and all my good pleasure concerning you I will accomplish. Amen. Psalm 33 verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The purposes of his heart to all generations. And Isaiah 48, that scripture that we know and I love, he says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? See, the danger of being romantic with the word of God, that means you've been so, you know, around it so much, you've, you've, you've romanticized with it, you are so used to it, we're so used to the Christ Christian we it rolls off our tongues, is that the danger of that is that it no longer has that power anymore to impact our lives. Where we get overly familiar with the word of God, we forget the God who said what he said. See, when we get familiar with church, we forget that the God of the church, the one that we've come to meet, his words are forever settled in heaven. He does not play with his words. The word of God is what formed you and I, is what formed everything that you and I see. So if God is saying break forth, now let me tell you why I'm saying this. Because for some reason, because I've been to so many DTCs, in fact, I'm the lead that plans DTC. There is a danger of not focusing on what God is saying, especially when you're busy doing planning. And so what I did every weekday that I was here for DTC was to sit here. While everybody was at home, I sat at my desk and I said, I want to hear what God is saying to the church. I don't want to be a starving baker because you can give to everybody and lack. Yes, you will cook for everybody, but by the time it's time to eat, you're too full to eat. Mm. You become familiar with the smell of the food, that you're almost full on the smell. But the smell of the food does not nourish the smell of the food does not nurture. It is the eating and the imbibing of the food that makes your body strong. Is somebody tracking with me this morning? I want you to know that the word that God speaks to us, their spirit and their life, they are supposed to do something, activate something in us. They're supposed to begin to move us from one level to another level. So please, don't forget the word of God. It is not that DTC is over and so let's move on now to the next program. It's Peniel in July. And so let's look again to what God is saying. I mean, if you were a father who every time the child comes, the only time the child comes to you, the only, child the, child the only time the child remembers what you've said is when something is about to happen again, it's their birthday. How would you feel? His word is his will and his will is his word. And his word is forever settled. Amen. God said in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, I'm talking about enablers of greatness. He says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. So as you and I take steps towards greatness, as Pastor Tola has said, we should because he's the voice of God to us as the shepherd of, of, of Jesus House Baltimore. God will back us up in Jesus' name. As you take that step, I said, God will back you up in Jesus' name. I want you to know, though, that greatness is not achieved in a day. Your breaking forth is not going to happen in a day. My breaking forth is not going to happen in a day. It is in a process of time. And the process of greatness is facilitated by enablers. What is an enabler? Who is an enabler? An enabler is a person or thing that makes something possible. Say it again. An enabler is a person or thing that makes what? Something possible. So let's talk today about some enablers of greatness. Number one, choices. Somebody say choices. Come on, say it again. A choice is defined as an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. Mm. Choice is about taking a preferred option or a preferred route. Choice is a powerful thing and it's a gift from God. How many people know God gave us the, the gift of choice? Yeah, yeah. By design, God gave every human being a will, mm. the power to choose. 
Every day, therefore, every moment, from the moment that we wake up to the time that we go back to sleep, we are constantly making decisions. Constantly, constantly. What am I going to do this morning when I wake up? Am I going to pray or am I not? What am I going to do? Am I going to have breakfast or am I not? Am I going to wear this or am I going to wear that? Am I going to go through this route to work or am I not? Am I going to log in on time today or am I going to call out sick? Am I going to... We are going to make decisions that we act upon. Even when we refuse to make a decision, we have made a decision about not making a decision. <laughs> it, it's the truth. So a few things that we must note about choices. A, we make choices. Somebody say, I make, I make choices. We make choices and our choices in turn make us. We make choices and our choices do what? In turn, make us, yes. So your life and my life is a summation of the choices we have made so far. Sila. So if you want to change the way things are going in your life, what do you do? Change your... That's right, put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> it's as simple as this, really. You want good health, choose carefully what you eat. <laughs> because your choice can make you sick, even though God says, prosper in health. You want to do well in your business, choose to get as much knowledge about the business as you can and don't go in blind. Help me look at your neighbor and say, don't go in blind. You want to pass your exams, choose to do what? Study, yeah? <laughs> you need more income, choose to retool for a higher paying job or look for investment opportunities. You want friends, you want to get married, you want more people in your life, choose not to keep frowning and make yourself more friendly. Mm -mm, yeah, hey, that's a word for somebody right there. We make choices, and in turn, our choices do what? They make us. God wanted more children to do life with. So he and the Godhead came together, and they made a decision, and they acted upon it. They chose to make us in their own image and after their own likeness. Yes. And that's how we became the children of God, because God wanted fellowship. Second thing to note about choices, our choices have impact. Yes, our choices have or what we call consequences. The choice they make is what differentiates the successful from the unsuccessful. In other words, though God's promise stands, greatness is a choice. Breaking forth is a choice. Nobody can force you to do what you don't want to do. Have you ever heard the saying, you can force a horse to the river, but you can't force it to drink? You can wish the best for somebody, but if they don't choose the best for themselves, they will stay in the place where they are. They will never move forward. You will, they will be like Jerusalem. Jesus wanted to do so much good for Jerusalem, but he cried. He wept at the end of the day. He said, Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how I want to gather you together as a hen gathers his cheeks, but you would not let me. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, look at you. Look at the, the, the despondency you are in because you missed your day of visitation. The Son of God, God himself, came here on earth, and we rejected him. We made a choice that he was Joseph's son. He was a son of the carpenter. Our choices depend on our perspective, how we see things. And so we make a choice in line with what we see. The question this day is, what are you seeing? Greatness is a choice. Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I'm reading the New Living Translation. Somebody say amen. amen. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I don't want you to sleep. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Somebody ought to tell me these things from time to time. So I thank God for telling me these things. Deuteronomy 13, 19, New Living Translation. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death. This is God speaking. Between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. All that you will choose life, 
so that you and your descendants might live. Mm. Or that you would choose life. Or that you would choose the way of God. Or that you would choose the things that God is saying to, to you. Or that you would choose not the world, but the word. Or that you would choose life. So that you and your descendants may indeed break forth. Because he said, you will not only break forth to the left or the right. He said, your dis descendants shall inhabit the nations. They shall inhabit the Gentiles. They shall make desolate places. They shall make them abound. Amen. Amen. There's a statement that goes like this. As you make your bed, so you must lie on it. Meaning you must accept the consequences of your actions. Enough of deflecting it and doing a blame game and saying somebody was in charge of your misfortune. Nobody is in charge of our misfortune. But ourselves, even if somebody is remotely controlling you, it is your choice to go to God and say enough is enough. Hmm. See, see, greatness is the result when our choices align with the will of God. Greatness is the result when our choices align with the will of God. Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 to 18. Are you still here? Are you still here? Genesis 22, 15 to 18. ERV, easy to read version. Let's focus this morning. Genesis 22, 15 to 18, ERV. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. The angel said, you were ready to kill your only son for me. This angel is God. Because Abraham was not about to kill his son, Isaac, for any angel. So he's talking about God. It's just the easy to read version. That's how he translates it. You were ready to kill your only son for me. You were ready to make a choice that was difficult like this. And you will make it in alignment with my will. You were ready to do what I said you should do, even though it wasn't convenient for you. You were ready to tell the truth when a lie would have been the best thing to do so you can preserve yourself out of that difficult situation. You were ready to do that. You were ready to keep quiet in your marriage when this argument that could have led you either into divorce or not was before you. You were ready to give everything that you had for this child to be able to go to school. Because I'm raising a generation after my own very heart. You were ready to make this decision that it's not popular. You were ready to kill your only son for me. You were ready to give me your money, the money that you, you, you earned, that, that you worked so hard for. You were ready to lay it at the altar. You were ready to obey me like that. God was saying to Abraham, he said, since you did this for me, hmm, I make you this promise. I, the Lord, promise you that I will surely bless you. Let the people who are making such decisions say amen. amen. If you are not making such a decision, this is your wake-up call. He says, I will surely bless you and give you as many descendants as stars in the sky. There will be as many people as sand on the seashore. And your people, your family will live in cities that they will take from their enemies. He says, every nation on the earth will be blessed through your descendants. He says, I will do this because you obeyed me. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now let's juxtapose that, this Abraham's choice with that of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God exposed them to greatness. I'm trying to teach as well as preach. Maybe you've already recognized. Because I, I want us to see something. Because every time that believers, as we come to the house of God, or we come into the presence of God, or God gives us the word, even when we're studying on our own, we think that word will come to pass automatically. It doesn't. I don't care what pedigree you are. I don't care how much you pray to God. It will not come to pass on its own. Paul spoke to Timothy. He said, concerning the prophecies that you have received on your head, he said, therefore, wage a good what? Warfare. Do something about the word. Do it, do it, do it. There is no way that, I, I, I know many of us are doing it, so pardon me if the word does not make sense to you today, but I believe that there are some people, either here on site or online, that you're watching me, that you just take the word of God and you put it on cruise control. I want you to know the word of God does not work until you work it. It doesn't. 
It has the power within it to work. But there's something called inertia. Okay, there's something called friction. Let, let's even use friction. Until I apply friction, I don't even move. Until I begin to rub something against something, there is no movement. Until you and I begin to apply force, whatever it is we are expecting God to do does not move. You have to apply force. An object will stay within that same position until an equal and opposite force is applied to it. There has to be force that moves the word of God. The Bible says the word of God does not return unto him void. Don't sit there and say it must accomplish. It will not accomplish until you work it. If Jesus could come here on earth and he said, the night come and when no man can work, so I am working while it is yet day. How much more you and I, we ought to work the work of the Lord. And when you work the word of the Lord, it will work for you. Look at what Adam and Eve did with the word. God exposed them to greatness. He blessed them in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, which is still the persistent blessing on all of us. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. He says, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. He gave us dominion. He gave them dominion. They were the first people that God blessed. God empowered. The blessing is an empowerment to prosper. It's an empowerment to become. And God blessed them. God gave them everything they needed. Just like God gave us Jesus. And in Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead. Everything you are not. If you're looking for health, it's in Jesus. If you're looking for wealth, it's in Jesus. If you're looking for promotion, it's in Jesus. For promotion does not come from the north or the, from the, from the east or the west. It comes only from God. Anything you and I are looking for is going to be in Jesus. And it's going to be in the word. That's why he's called the word of God. And God released his word and said, be fruitful, multiply. So there was a promise to Adam and Eve. It's as if they had no choice but to become who God had called them to be. But listen to what happened. Not too long after, they made a choice. Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 10, I'm reading the Message Bible, and I'm going to be reading, so please just listen attentively. The serpent was clever, more clever than any wild animal God had made. He spoke to the woman. Do I understand what God told you, that he told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, not at all. We can eat from the trees in the garden. It's only about the tree in the middle of the garden that God said don't eat from it. Then Eve had it added her own, you know, because women, we have a way of adding our own, you know. She said, God said, don't even touch it <laughs> or you will die. The serpent told the woman, you won't die. God knows that the moment you eat from that tree, you'll see what's really going on. You'll be just like God. But wasn't she already like God? Wasn't she already like God? When God said, come, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. Wasn't she already like God? But Satan told her, you'll be just like God, knowing everything, ranging all the way from good to evil. You know what? I don't even want to know anything, I, everything. I don't know about you. There are some things I don't want to know. It is TMI, too much information. It is not my business because I can't know everything and still fulfill destiny. I must focus on some things, right? That's right. When the woman saw that the tree looked like good eating and realized that she would, what she would get out of it, she would know everything. Hmm, busybody. She took and ate the fruit and then gave some to her husband and he ate. Immediately, the Bible says in verse 7, the two of them did see what's really going on. That's what message said, or what version, yeah. They saw what was really going on. They saw themselves naked. That's what it says. They saw what was really going on. They saw themselves naked. They sewed fig leaves together as makeshift clothes for themselves. When they heard the sound of God strolling in the garden in the evening breeze, the man and his wife hid in the trees of the garden. They hid from God. God called to them and said, where are you? He said, this is Adam saying, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. God said, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? Did you make the choice? Who told you that that thing would not work? Did you make the choice that I told you not to make? The choice of the guy you chose to marry. So now you, it's not going to work because you chose and I told you. Don't choose that. You chose that job. I told you, don't choose that job. You chose that relationship. I told you, don't do it. Who now told you? So now you can see. 
that the choice you made was wrong. It was a wrong choice. She said, sorry, Adam said, um, well, the woman you gave me as a companion, she gave me fruit from the tree and yes, I ate it. What excuse are you and I giving? We made the choice, but we excuse it. Do you know what's funny about the choices we make? When somebody else makes that choice, we have a problem with it, right? If it was somebody else who made the choice, we'll have a problem with it. But when we make that choice, we want mercy. We excuse it away. Well, nobody knew what I was going through when I made that choice. And the woman answered, the serpent seduced me and I ate. And so fast forward, verse 23 to 24 says, so God expelled them from the garden of Eden and sent them to work the ground, the same dirt out of which they'd been made. He threw them out of the garden and stationed angel cherubim and a revolving sword of fire east of it, guarding the path to the tree of life. You know what? Our choices enable or disable us from greatness. Can you even begin to imagine what the Garden of Eden looked like? The Bible says there were four rivers that entered into the Garden of Eden that flowed in and out of the Garden of Eden. There was gold there. There was bedellium there. There was onyx there. There was everything you wanted that was supply, supply, unending supply into the Garden of Eden. But these people botched it. And many times you and I also botch it. But I think this kind of word is a reminder that even though you and I want to be great, even though you've accepted and received the word break forth, that the choices that you and I make is going to determine whether we indeed break forth or not. That greatness is a choice. Hallelujah. Ah, and I thought you'd really be happy with this word. You're not? <laughs> I, I mean, I was happy when God told me. Let me tell you why. Because what you don't pay attention to might very well hurt you. Yeah. It's easy to come and to jump in church and to shout hallelujah. But where the rubber meets the road is in the choices that we make from Monday through Friday and to Saturday. On Sunday, it's easy to put on the cloak of Christian. But on Monday, what happens? The choices we make in turn make us. And the truth of the matter is everybody is asking where is your God. But you know that it wasn't the choice that God ordained. So it wasn't God's fault. It was yours and it was mine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the way I found that God uses me to pray. Usually my first point is, that, is, is like that thing God told me. And then he says other things. So how do I make sound choices? So maybe I'll stop on choices. How do I make sound choices? Number one, with the help of the Holy Spirit. With the help of the... Romans chapter 8 verse 14, Romans 8 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Are you a son of God? Are you a son of God? I am a son of God. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. We have the Holy Spirit, but many times we don't use the power of the Holy Spirit in making choices. You know, some, one day God told me, or maybe even use God as an example. God told me, oh, you know what? Your angels are ministering spirits. They're supposed to be going up and down, doing your bidding. So I really had a vision of the angel that was in charge of my case, sitting on one side of the, you know, like right near my door. I was waking up that morning and that was the vision I saw. And my angel was so obese. That was the vision I saw. And God said, he's doing nothing, nothing, okay? <laughs> okay, maybe I reveal this thing to, he's, he's doing nothing. You have not sent him on any errand. You have this mighty tool to use, but you refuse to use it. Is your angel a fat cat like, like mine, like mine was? After that, I said, you will not, yeah, you're going to be a lean, mean machine. <laughs> I'm going to send you to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Start running. With the help of the Holy Spirit, 
When Jesus was leaving, he said, don't do anything. He said to the disciples, he said, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. He said, I will send the Holy Spirit who will come upon you. And then you'll be able to witness. You'll be able to do everything you need to do. Are we using, utilizing, apprehending the help of the Holy Spirit in living our daily lives? He's not only supposed to be with you in church. He's supposed to be with you at home. He's supposed to be with you as you lead. He's supposed to be with you at work. He's supposed to be with you in the car. He's supposed to be with you in your business. He's supposed to be with you also in church. But he's supposed to be with you perpetually for as many as I led, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. He doesn't just lead me to church. He leadeth me on Monday. He leadeth me on Tuesday. He leadeth me on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then I come back another, another Sunday for another full dose of the embodiment of God in the Holy Spirit. He is renewed. I stay him. He begins to go to work. He leadeth me. John 16, 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears from God. And he will tell you what is to come. He will tell you the choice you ought to be making. He will guide your footsteps. He will enable you so that you do not make a mistake. The choice that you make is going to come directly from heaven. In alignment with the will of God. So that when you stand, everybody will be able to see the glory of God upon you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 30, 21 says, your ears will hear a word behind you. Saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Whether you turn to the right or to the left. Didn't God say you are going to break forth to the left and to the right? He says God will speak to you on how to do exactly that. He will speak to you on what direction you should take to be able to break forth. You want to be great? Then engage God. Engage the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks. He is that silent witness within you that is guiding you and directing you. He's not only good for traffic. He's also good in your marriage. He's also good in leading your children. He's also good in your business. The Holy Spirit is good in your career. He's good in the choice of education that you should take. The Holy Spirit is good in every single way, every single time. He will guide you. He will direct you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, New Living Translation. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't give any part of your heart to the world. Don't give any part of your heart to yourself. Any part of your heart that you give to yourself is going to be ruled by emotionality. It's going to be ruled by how you feel at that point in time. So trust in the Lord with all your, all your heart. The entire 100% of the space of your heart. Trust in the Lord. He never fails. You may fail. The young lions, they suffer and they do hunger. But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew their... Hallelujah! Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your understanding. I love that. That's the New Living Translation. Do not depend on your understanding. You know what? Why? Because your understanding is finite. And the understanding of God is infinite. You and I can never ever search God out. The Bible says his ways are different from our ways, even as the heavens are far from the earth. Maybe somewhere between heaven and earth is what I ought to be doing. But I am here on earth and I'm making decisions about what I'm doing. How on earth will I be able to achieve what I'm supposed to achieve? That answer is in heaven. And only God who knows that answer can download it to you. Amen. He says, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you what, which path to take. Seek God. With the help of the Holy Spirit, he will direct you. 1B, by the word of God, he will direct you by his word. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, the New Living Translation. Bible says, but Jesus told him, no, when he was talking to the devil, when the devil came to tempt him. The scriptures say, Jesus said, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. People do not become great by their degree alone. That's what he's saying. People do not become great by the efficiency of their business alone. 
Yeah, your business may be that which is in need, right? In the society, but people don't become great by that alone. People become great by the proceeding word of God, by what God's saying on a daily basis. Because what God said yesterday that you should do may not be what he says today. Therefore, by the word of God, when you and I go in there on a daily basis, we receive fresh manna for the day. Yeah, that's why we would never make mistakes or errors. That's why you will get spiritual 411 on what you need to do, what I need to do. Many times, if I don't go into the word of God as I should, I'm so dry. I don't know if that happens to you. You can blame it on anything, but it's because you've not sought the Lord in his word. Ah, I don't know if that happens to you. If I've not been seeking God, I'm like, that's why David said, as the deer panteth for the water brooks, so my soul panteth after you, O Lord. He call, goes on and says, when shall I come and appear before your presence? When shall I pick up my Bible and begin to look for you? Uh, if, he said, if you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. By the word, by the word. I know we live very busy lives. I know that, I'm aware of that. But the truth of the matter is, as, as busy as our lives are, within that busy life, we're making choices every day. But we're not empowered because we're far from the word. What is God saying to you now? I know what he said last week. What is he saying now? By the word of God. Then in prayer, in prayer. Somebody say in prayer. The Bible said, David said in 1 Samuel 38, 1 Samuel 30, verse 8, New Living Translation. Then David asked the Lord. This is when they had raided. He had fought with the Philistines, but they had raided his wife and his children. The camp where he was in Ziklag. And first, the Amalekites. Thank you. Sorry, the Amalekites. Thank you for that. Can you please appreciate that person who helped me? <clears throat> Then David asked the Lord, shall I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. Now, 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 let me say this. If many of us were like David, who had never lost the battle, would you ask God? You'd never lost the battle. You know, we see how wrestlers and boxers, when they come into the ring, right? They give you the dozier on them. Every fight was a TKO. There was never one that they'd lost. Most of them have won. Every footballer, soccer now, they will tell you how many goals. They'll tell you how many times they didn't make it. They'll tell you, but this is God. David realized that even though he, could, he had never lost a battle, the only reason he had never lost a battle was because he had God backing him each time. And so David did what he normally did. This was not an unnatural thing for David to do. The Bible says, David inquired of the Lord. If I were to write that scripture, I would say, David inquired of the Lord one more time. Because yesterday we inquired of the Lord and he answered us. But today are we still inquiring of the Lord? David said, huh. Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. Before I make the choice of just running helter-skelter, will I catch them? Will this be a fruitful journey? Will I be great? Will this be a good use of my time? God said, yes. And in 1 Samuel 30, 18, New Living Translation, the Bible says, David got back everything. Somebody say everything. David got back everything the Amalekites had taken, and he rescued his two wives. Because, you know, wives were important to David. <laughs> oh you're laughing it's true the bible said when kings went to war this is the choice David made he stayed at home in fact the bible started that scripture out by saying it was spring maybe he was enjoying you know the birds and the butterflies everything was green and he sent Joab to war and he stayed at home and while he stayed at home he opened his curtain. He was like, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who she be? Come. You know, when, when a king does that, like four servants, who that? 
She Bathsheba. 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 Call her. Bathsheba eventually became a wife of David and gave birth to the next king of Israel after David, Solomon. Because the choice he made resulted in the situation that came about. But God told him, he went. One thing about David, and, and, and that's, that's how I'm going to end today, was that David always knew where to go when he goofed. The only thing I'm hearing sincerely, I don't know. If you're in here and you're no longer accurate and you these days are not even sure of yourself anymore, and the choices that you've been making these days, you found out that they're not really, you're not there, just rise to your feet. Let, let, let's do some praying. Let's, let's do some praying. If that is you, your choices could be better. Thank you. Your choices could be better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your choices could be better. It's okay. You know, you can form for me, but God knows because I can't go on. Um, my time is up for one. Number two, I feel this thing strongly in my spirit. Thank you to all that you know. Thank you. Thank Just keep rising up. Don't worry about whoever it is that is sitting beside you. The choices, you know, you know, you know. You know that the choices that you are making, you could be more precise. There could be precision. There could be more precision. And that is you. I want all of us to now rise. All of the people that, that rose up, please, can you come forward? You just leave where you are. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Everybody rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody that, that rose up, just come to the front. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's, let's hold on to the horn of the altar this morning. Yes, yes. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Yes. There is nothing you ask him. Bible says, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Seek and ye shall find. Ask God. Ask God. If you are still in the congregation and you know you ought to be here, if you are watching us from home, I want you to rise up where you are. Rise up as a sign of that you are coming to God. The choices that you and I make are hindering our success, our progress, our breaking forth. If that is you, please join us. I'm just going to give another 30 seconds. Join us if that is you. Don't be afraid and don't be shy. Don't be intimidated by anybody. You need to make, or maybe you need to make a choice. Thank you. Thank you. You need to make a choice and that choice is coming up and you do not know you do not know how this is all going to turn out just come on come on come on come on come on we are before the lord the all-powerful god we are before the lord the all you know what miracles still happen things do happen when you come to church the thing that maybe covid did is for us to forget that there is power when we come into the house of god that there is power i don't know if you know for the past one week i've been under such form of maybe i don't know attack or whatever it is but i summoned up my loins about two days ago and i said i'm a fight there has to be something going on this word needs warfare that's what it means if that is you you know that there is a prophecy over your head and you're about to make a choice but you don't know how to what to what to do how to go about it just come just come lift up your hands 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 and begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray if you're in the congregation maybe you are sorted I want you to, to just put your hand out like that and stretch it towards the swans and say God you did it for me do it for them come on come on let's pray let's pray if you are still in the congregation come 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 unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest saith the Lord come on come on just join them just join them come on lift your voice and begin to ask God if you are the one in front come on and ask God Father Father, ah, this is me, your son, this is me, your daughter. Arise, oh Lord, and help me. Arise, oh Lord. Arise in your power. Arise in your strength. Arise, Lord God. Arise for me. Arise for my sake, my Lord and my God. Come on, come on. A close mouth is a close destiny. Begin to ask God. Ask him, ask him. You've come to the altar of God. You've come to the altar of God. Hold on to the horns of the altar. Don't let him go. Don't let Jacob said, I will not let you go until, unless you bless me. Ask God to bless you. Ask God to bless you. Jabez said, Oh, that you will bless me indeed. Enlarge.
touch my territory. Oh Lord God Almighty, my life is in your hands. Oh, my times are in your hands. My future is in your hands. Lord God, help me, help me, help me. I need to make a choice. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, help me. I need to know, I need to hear your voice. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to speak to your heart. Ask him to reveal to you that which he wants you to do, the way he wants you to take. Oh Lord God Almighty, there is nothing impossible for you to do. Here are your children, oh God. They're calling on you and they're asking you in the name of Jesus, do that which only you can do. Do that which only you can do. Arise, oh God. You said when we call upon you, you will answer us. You will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. In the name of Jesus, by the power in the name, Lord God, arise. Oh, arise, oh God. Arise for my brother. Arise for my sister. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we say thank you. Mm, thank you, Jesus. There's nothing impossible for God to do. Nothing. He's the God of all flesh. Your times are in his hands. Your choices are in his hands. And I pray for you today that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will get direction. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will say unto you, this is the way to go. The unction of the Holy Spirit is upon you. As a shepherd leads his sheep, he will lead you. You will not stumble. You will not fall. This decision you're about to take, when you take that decision, it will be by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He will give you a sign that you're on the right path. I've often asked God, I will trust you even when I can't trace you. But every single time I've said that, he's given me a sign to let me know he's with me. Therefore, I pray that the same way he does that, to calm my nerves, to ensure I'm not anxious, I pray he will do the same for you. And I pray that you will receive that greatness that he has promised you. You will break forth to the right. You will break forth to the left. Your seed shall inherit the Gentiles and they shall make desolate nations abound in Jesus' name. So shall it be for you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. All hands up. Because you're with me, I will not fear. All hands up. Let's worship God for a minute or two. Let's just worship him. When he sends a word like that, I know some people are laughing, they're gisting and everything. Never mind. This is a sacred moment where the spirit of God is moving. Yeah? I want us to exalt God. Just for a few minutes. Something is going on in the lives of each and every one. Nobody comes into the presence of God and goes back empty-handed. Unless your heart is not open. If your heart is open, believe me, even for the ones who did not come out, God sees your heart. I want you to just exalt God and thank Him. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him for that which He's doing.
lift your hands and say, because you're with me. Because you're with me. Emmanuel is his name. God with us. Because you're with me. I want you to know he's with you. Because you're with me. That you're worried about. Lord God. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is praying concerning their relationship. They're praying concerning who am I taking the right step on who I'm marrying, who I want to get married to. Am I taking the right step concerning this child? Am I taking the right step concerning this marriage? Am I taking the right step in my career? I know all of you are here because those are the things coming to my heart. And therefore, Father, we say thank you for your guidance. Thank you, Father, because you said when we put our trust in you, we will not be put to shame. Thank you, Father, for the choices that you are placing on our hearts and the signs you're giving us all week long, oh God. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Come on, come on. It is done. It is done in the name of Jesus. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. You're a son. Be seated in his presence. If you don't know him, I want you to know he wants to know you. He created you for his pleasure. And if that is you, whether you are in here or you are online, all of this that we have done, you should be a partaker. And therefore, I pray for you today. Maybe you don't know Christ, the leader, the shepherd of our souls. I pray that today, if he's talking on your heart string to follow him, do not harden your heart. And if that is you, I pray for you today that God Almighty will accept you into his kingdom. He will lead you by his spirit. Welcome to the body of Christ. Because you're no longer a slave to fear. You're now a child of God. If you have now said, I want to receive you, I want you to reach out to us. Just put it in the chat if you're online. And if you're in here, I want you to see an usher before you leave and let them know, I'm that person who received Christ today. In Jesus' name. It's time for tithes and offering in the house. Yes, it's time to be blessed. Amen. Also, if you made a pledge during DTC and you'd like to redeem your pledge, this is also your opportunity to do so. Um, we have several platforms that you can give through. You can give via PayPal. You can give via text to give. You can give via um, uh, Cash App. You can give via Zelle. Um, and you can also, if you're in the house and you'd like to give a, a check or by cash, please lift up your hands and the ushers will bring an envelope to you. Yes, please keep it lifted and they'll come to you. It's over here. And they'll come to you. And as we give today, I pray that God Almighty will remember you for good. In this season, 
everything that you need to bring forth. He will cause it to work together for you. He will supply it out of his riches and glory through Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. You will lack no good thing in Jesus' name. Um, true worship are going to lead us as we give. God bless you.
Let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you. Almighty Father, we give you all the praise. We thank you for the grace to give. We thank you for everyone that has given their tithe, their offering. We pray that you bless it. We pray that it will be used to the glory of your name. We pray that you bless the hands that have given. And those that don't have, we pray that you provide and you make them be partakers of your blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we be seated? Um, as we sit down, I want us to just appreciate God for that word and to also appreciate Pastor B. That was a, a good word. Um, there are things that we take for granted, but the reminder helps us know that God is still there, is reminding us to do things. Let's just appreciate Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are at the point of our service that we never like to ignore or miss. There are some important guests in our midst, some celebrities, if I can say. So if, if this is your first time visiting Jesus House Baltimore and you're in this sanctuary, can you please rise? Let's start appreciating them. Let's begin to appreciate them. If this is your first time, please rise to your feet. We'll be out of here soon. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Keep appreciating them. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. We do not take it for granted. You could have been anywhere else. You could have been chilling and Netflixing. You could have been at a friend's place. You could have been on your bed still sleeping. It's Sunday. But we do appreciate that you came to our church today. This is Jesus House Baltimore, as you already know. Our mission is to challenge you to maximize your God given potentials. We do appreciate that you came today and we do value your presence. Our pastors are not here today, Pastor Tola and Pastor Kofo, but I know that they will very much love to be your pastors. Please do not sit yet. I know, I know. I hate to put you on the spot. Please keep standing. We'll be done soon. Um, um, the members of our welcome team are on the aisles. They will be able to direct you to the lobby where we have a gift for you and we will very much love for you to visit again so thank you so much for coming we love you we appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you next time i do know that we have some wonderful people online as well our guests if this is your first time tuning in online um you're welcome there's a qr code um showing on the screen please scan that qr code and complete the form that would come up with all your details and someone from the welcome team would reach out to you. Once again, thank you for coming. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, I still see some of our first time guests seated. Please, please don't leave without getting your gifts. And uh, we look forward to you visiting again. Thank you so much. Before we close, oh, let's keep appreciating them, please. Let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We pray that your lives will not remain the same. Before we bring the service to a close, so Pastor B said a number of things. I mean, she spoke on choices. She gave steps, things you can do to make sure your choices are on the right track. Um, and I just have a prayer from Isaiah 54 verse 4 before we close. As we make these choices, as we send our obese angels on errands, as we walk them, um, Isaiah 54 4 says, Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. So, as you make those choices, God will not fail you. Shall we rise as we close the service? Father, we bless your name. To you alone be all the glory and all the praise. Thank you for all of us, your children. As we leave, go with us. Do not leave us alone. Let us enjoy and bask in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.